Hey YouTube, it's ICU. Today we have the new MacBook, the 2016 iteration. We're going to be quickly unboxing and reviewing it in today's video. And let's go ahead and get straight into this by starting with the price. So of course, like its predecessor, I just have the Apple Store app open here. It starts at $1,299 and goes up from there for the additional or the improved configuration, which of course bumps up the onboard storage as well as the CPU. So as you can see, starts at $1,299. And the only real noticeable difference between this one and the last one is the new rose gold option. Of course, you don't have to pick that you can still get silver gold or space gray it would actually be kind of lame if you were forced into rose gold because I know that color is not for everyone but we do have it here today just so we can check it out on the channel now aside from that the only real differences here boil down to the processor upgrade a battery upgrade and faster flash so this thing is now powered by the latest sixth generation Skylake dual core Intel core M processor up to 1.3 gigahertz and that of course comes bundled with the new Intel HD graphics 515. Overall, they say that provides 25% faster performance. It also has faster PCIe-based flash and faster 1866 megahertz memory. And thanks in part because of that upgraded processor, but also because of the new 41.4 watt hour lithium polymer battery, we now have an extended battery life by one hour. So instead of nine hours, we now have 10 hours on the 2016 version. Is it really a great upgrade from the 2015? I mean, not really. We're only getting about 25% faster performance. Faster flash storage won't really matter to most though. So let's go ahead and get into the unboxing portion now that we know what's new with the 2016 version. On the front, we just have a basic profile picture of the laptop, of course with it closed, and the top and bottom simply say MacBook, whereas both sides of course remain blank. Now on the back, we just have information such as the part number as well as the serial number over here on the left, but what we're really concerned about is this right here. This is the sticker that confirms it is indeed the 12 inch retina macbook so as for the specs let's get into it we have a 12 inch diagonal led backlit high resolution glossy widescreen display now we have a 1.1 gigahertz dual core intel core m3 processor with four megabytes of l3 cache and turbo boost up to 2.2 gigahertz remember this is the base eight gigabytes of onboard 1866 LPDDR3 SD RAM. Both configurations will just have that eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of onboard flash storage, the integrated Intel HD graphics 515, a USB-C port, that's it. We don't have a secondary one or even a Thunderbolt port on this guy, just like its predecessor, a headphone jack, stereo speakers, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0, a FaceTime camera, which believe it or not, is still 480. ADP, sadly. Now that we've gone over all of the specs, let's go ahead and bust into the box. All right, so changing up the view, we're going to use this simple knife right here to cut through the plastic wrap that is protecting it, and we can go ahead and quickly remove that as well. And now that it's fully off and to the side, what we're going to do is just remove the lid, which should reveal the new MacBook sitting directly on top. All right, and setting the lid off to the side, we have the MacBook right here in all of its rose gold glory. It looks very pink in person, and it probably will on camera as well. So let's go ahead and take the plastic wrap. That's protecting the MacBook itself off, just like so. And here we go, just as thin as ever, just as thin as I remember it. I currently do not have the new MacBook. I love the design, but it just has way too many drawbacks and compromises for my liking, so I never kept one. But here we go, guys. This is the new MacBook 2016 version. The body and the style is exactly the same as its predecessor. The only thing that's different here really is the new rose gold color. So we're going to set this off to the side. I'm actually going to turn it on as well. So as you can see, when we lift the lid here we do have this simple piece of cloth that is covering it it's not really like cloth it's probably just some recycled material but it does a nice job of protecting the screen and we're going to quickly power it up here just by pressing the power button on the keyboard there and we're going to now set it off to the side and go over the rest of the contents of the box so as you can see here we have this little packet that says designed by apple in california and we're going to open it up here 
And on the top, we just have a little sheet that says MacBook Quick Start Guide, and it goes over some of the basics of the laptop itself. Nothing really too important or interesting here, just probably what you already know about it. And when we flip it over to the other side, it gives you some info on OS X, as well as how to use the trackpad, because remember, this is the force touch trackpad. So it is actually not a physical trackpad. Instead, it uses the same taptic engine found on the Apple Watch to emulate the clicks kind of. So it actually vibrates back at you to give you the illusion of it clicking. So here we have this MacBook info sheet and two Apple logo stickers in rose gold, which is kind of cool, I guess. Now we only have two things left here. We have the charging brick as well as the charging USB type C cable down below here at the bottom. This is just male USB-C to male USB-C. And of course, this is how you're going to charge it. And because it is USB type C, it is fully reversible, which is nice. And then we have the charging brick right here. It's just very similar to what we'd get for an iPad. And if you're in a different country that doesn't have the standard US wall outlet, all you have to do is just pull this out and you can pop in the adapter of choice right there. Let's go ahead and put this back together like so. And of course, to charge it, all you have to do is just pop in this USB type C cable and then the other end into the one port on the computer aside from the audio jack. So let's go ahead and set this off to the side and return to the start of the video, the new MacBook. All right, so here we are. I've taken the liberty of setting up this new MacBook in its entirety. As you can see, the rose gold is extensive and it covers the entire device. So all of the aluminum on it is completely anodized in that rose gold color. Really the only other color that we have is just black. And of course that outlines and frames the screen there and the keys, of course. So I really do love a couple of things about this new MacBook, but I just can't personally justify this device. It's just too underpowered for me and you're going to to see that right now. So what we're actually going to do is run a few benchmarks. I've taken the liberty of installing two things, Nova Bench as well as Black Magic Disk Speed Test. We're going to start with the former of the two. Nova Bench essentially tests your computer and it tests a few different things related to the specifications of it to give you an overall and a cumulative score that is supposed to act as a numeric representation of your computer's capabilities. So I've closed out of everything. I'm running through Nova Bench here and we're just going to speed it up to the end result now. All right, so here we are with the final Nova Bench score. It's a mere 533, definitely better than the comparable version of this configuration from its predecessor, but nowhere near where it should be if you intend to do any sort of hardcore editing. So video editing, for example, I could not really edit the video you're watching now on this computer, but this thing definitely has its place. It's for the individual who isn't necessarily heavy into the professional side of using computers and who wants to do a few things such as browsing the web, interact with Apple's cloud-based services, download a few things here and there, watch movies, stream Netflix, that type of thing. Basically, it seems more like a post-PC device than an actual personal computer in this case, and that's what it should be. After all, it doesn't have that great of a CPU. This one only has 1.1 gigahertz, and remember that is Intel's Core M processor series, so it's nothing too substantial, but it is better than its predecessor, and it's about 25% faster, give or take. So let's actually go ahead and launch up into the next benchmark test we have here, which is just the black magic disk speed test. And this will essentially just write a file to the PCIe based flash and in turn read it to kind of give you an idea of how fast it can write and read files. Of course, because this is even improved flash over its predecessor, it should be pretty impressive. So let's go ahead and hit start test here. And as you can see, we're getting a great score already, a read score of about 620 megabytes per second. That's great. And we have a read score of about 855 megabytes per second. Really awesome for a laptop, especially this one. And I expect that the higher end one would actually show some faster speeds here, even though they are both comparable. So this is a really great laptop. I absolutely love the design, but it's not a very powerful laptop. Not at all. It's more comparable to a netbook 
For those of you who remember netbooks, that is. Let's go over the design quickly. Like I said, though, it hasn't really changed. So, of course, we do have this trackpad at the bottom. It has that Taptic engine, which is really nice. I'm always so surprised anytime I use a MacBook with the Taptic engine at how well it does of actually emulating a real trackpad with a diving board. So this is pretty great here. We have the keyboard that extends from one side of the computer to the other. It takes up pretty much the entire footprint when we're talking about left to right. It actually clicks in really nice, even though the keys don't have a lot of travel. That's because of the improved mechanism that sits beneath them. We, of course, have the speaker grill here, kind of at the top. Let's see if we can get a close-up of that. It's a little hard to tell on camera here just because of this color and the way I have my lighting set up in the room right now. But as you can see, here's the speaker. And when I close it, you'll notice it is a very, very thin laptop overall. Of course, that's one of the key selling points. And we just have this single USB Type-C port here. And yes, you can use that USB-C port for more things besides just charging, data transfer, connecting a display, whatever it may be. Though, of course, be prepared to use adapters if it's not actually native to whichever peripheral you're connecting it to. I know there are some other third-party monitors that actually support USB Type-C, which is great, and that's where things are moving to, but they're not quite there yet. Again, we just have the back hinge there. It looks really nice when it's closed. And on the other side, we have the microphone as well as the audio jack. That's really it. On the bottom, we just have these feet that will keep the bottom aluminum from scuffing. So that's the new MacBook in its entirety. Let's go ahead and open it up quickly. We're going to click on the Apple logo, followed by About This Mac. And now we have further confirmation that this is indeed the 12-inch Retina MacBook early 2016 with the 1.1 gigahertz Intel Core M3 processor. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. I hope you liked it, and if you're interested in my upcoming iPad Pro 9.7 inch giveaway, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this laptop and the upgrade down below in the comment section. I personally am waiting until the MacBook Pro gets a new MacBook-like overhaul. So of course, that crazy super thin design, that's when I'm going to be jumping ship for my 2014 MacBook. Let me know your laptop preference in the comments. Like I said, be sure to stay tuned for my upcoming giveaway. Click the subscribe button below if you have yet to. That way you will be fully notified. You can also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Stay tuned for coverage ranging from new Macs to iOS updates and even jailbreaking. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your Device community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.